Wait, would you look at that? Would you look at that? I mean, how could we have seen this coming? I, mean, I didn't see this coming, did you? <laughs> right. For those, of, for those of you that don't know, Amos Yi is a particular individual who basically, like, way, way back when, <clears throat> way, way back when, when he was living in Singapore, he made a bunch of, like, edgy YouTube videos where there was a video of him, like, humping a copy of the Quran and stuff like that, and in Singapore they have some extremely authoritarian laws when it comes to speech, and Amos was arrested, he was imprisoned in Singapore, and then they tried to put him in prison again and stuff like that and they kept coming after him and then everyone was like oh no let's all band together and help this this poor boy who is you know being in having his freedom of speech infringed upon by an authoritarian state and then he managed to get to america and everyone was like oh that's great he's in america now you know the country that has the most freedom of speech out of anywhere else in the world fantastic that's great and then pretty pretty much as soon as he's as soon as he fucking Touched the ground after he got off the bloody plane. He starts uh, saying that having sex with having a guy, buddy, guy, hey, motherfucker, uh, having sex with children should be legal. And that's and that's when like you saw all the people from back then. You know, back then when it was back then there was still a little bit of a break off. You know, around like uh, atheism plus and uh, the skeptics. But it was mostly the skeptics that helped him and all that. You kind of saw everyone. You know, Homer Simpson in the bushes. Just kept <laughs> that, like yeah, nobody, nobody wanted to associate with him after that, and he was looking for people that wanted to debate him, and I was one of the people who took him up on his offer, and I debated him twice, and it was uh, quite famously uh, the first debate I had with him was quite famously the only debate I've ever had where I actually got like unironically angry, <laughs> like during it because of some of the things that he was saying. He was saying some really bad stuff and people are saying, oh, why have you privated your, uh, why, well, I didn't private them, I actually deleted them. Why did you uh, delete your videos of your debates with Amos Yee? And the reason I did it is because given some of the things that he said, even though I'm debating against them, YouTube doesn't care about that. Like, even if you're debating against, like, the horrible shit, YouTube doesn't care, and it was a very easy opportunity for someone who doesn't like me to go back and report my videos and get me a strike, because Amos was talking about babies and shit, right? So that's, it would be a very easy way for someone to be able to get me a strike. And during, uh, during my debates uh, with Amos, I flat out asked him, you seem very passionate about this type of thing being made legal, are you a paedophile? And Damos said, no. Well. <laughs> well, 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 well. If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Singaporean blogger Amos Yee sentenced to six years in jail in the United States for child pornography and grooming. Uh, Washington, Singaporean blogger Amos Yee was sentenced by a US court on Thursday, December the 2nd to six years in jail after he pleaded guilty to two charges of child pornography and grooming. Yee, 23, was also ordered by the Chicago court not to contact the victim, who was then 14 years old, for two years after his release from jail. Yee had also faced uh, 16 other child pornography-related charges, which were dismissed as part of a plea deal he accepted. So Jesus Christ, he gets six years even with a plea deal. God damn, it must have been bad. Uh, according to the first charge of child pornography, Yi solici solicited, persuaded, and induced the victim to appear on video and other mediums and pose, which involved lewd behaviour, between February and July in 2019. So I think... I think that that might have been around the time of my second debate with him. I think, I don't really remember. Uh, the charge, a Class 1 felony and second most serious type of offence under Illinois criminal law, carried a prison sentence of at least four years and up to 15 years. According to the second charge of grooming, Yi knowingly used WhatsApp to seduce, solicit and lure the victim <clears throat> to pose for photographs, which he distributed on WhatsApp over the same period. The charge had a minimum jail term of one year and a maximum of three years. Yi, who appeared in court via video link, <laughs> was advised by Judge Carol Howard that pleading guilty to the charges meant he could be deported, denied admission to the US, or denied naturalisation as a US citizen in the future. Now, the thing about that is I can already imagine Yi 
arguing back with the judge. Hey, hey, buddy, buddy, guy, hey, you motherfucker, hey. <laughs> right? But then, uh, this is the thing, right? he's been jailed for this over here. And he basically is... A lot of people like, I'll, I'll get into this at the end about, oh, where he was trolling and all that type of stuff, right? So basically, he is still wanted in Singapore. That's one of the reasons he left. It's one of the reasons he was granted, like, uh, asylum in the US because he made the case of, my human rights are going to be violated. They keep trying to put me in prison, even though I've already served my sentence. Because even that was true. He'd already served his sentences, but, like, the Singaporean government kept trying to put him in jail which is why he was granted asylum. And that was wrong. That was wrong, right? That was wrong. Um, but if he gets deported back to... So he served jail time in the US, get deported back to Singapore and gets put straight back in jail. So hopefully he won't be going back there. Uh, hopefully he will be going back there. Uh, uh, the convictions uh, could also affect his ability to obtain housing, employment and other licenses, including a driver's license, she added. Yi, who wore a surgical face mask and an orange prison jumpsuit, replied that he understood. Um, I don't know if he's... He's already been in jail for about a year, so I don't know if he'll get time served or something like that. I've, I've, I'm not really sure how it works over in America. I only have experience with the uh, Scottish judicial system, fortunately. Uh, the judge, as well as his public defender, both wished him luck at the end of the hearing, which lasted about 20 minutes. Yi was 20 at the time of his offences and living in Cook County, Chicago. Yi met the victim in February 2019 over the Riot chat app, beginning an online courtship, says Assistant State Attorney's Marcel Taylor. He said Yi repeatedly questioned that the victim provide him with photos showing naked parts of her body, as well as engaged in roleplay and sexual fantasies. On several occasions, this offender did in fact request that she engage in those roleplay and sexual fantasies by saying, show me your naked body, as well as several questions of that nature. Uh, Mr. Taylor said the evidence showed that he had been told by the victim that she was 14 at the time of the offence. During a hearing in October last year, I could, I could just imagine Yi arguing, you know, pulling the Inicio on defence. Um, technically, it's a febophile. Which, I mean, like, whatever, yeah, technically correct, but... <laughs> the fuck that? <laughs> Uh, during a hearing in October last year, a previous prosecutor said Yi and the victim eventually broke up and that he beca began harassing her after she repeatedly requested that he leave her alone. Yi can appeal but must file a motion within 30 days to withdraw his guilty plea before he can do so. He was previously jailed twice in Singapore for harassment and insulting a religious group in 2015 and for similar charges in 2016. That's going back to the other stuff that I, I said. Uh, he arrived in the United States in 2016 and was granted asylum in 2017. And there you go, and that's the end of the article. Now, back then when all that stuff was happened, when he came out with his advocacy right uh, a lot of people i had of so many people including sargon who made a video on it saying amos Yi is trolling amos Yi is trolling you he is just trolling like when he does all this pedophilia should be legal hey yeah guy fuck you buddy hey motherfucker like I, now i at the time i did not i still even before all this happened i knew he wasn't trolling right because when he started all of that stuff he got his talk at harvard shut down he lost all of his patrons, everyone like mass unsubscribed from his channel. Um, what else was it? Yeah, he got kicked out of, um, I think it was Mythicist Milwaukee. He was invited to speak at Mythicist Milwaukee and then I think that they heard all the shit he was saying and they went, "You nope, 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 you're not, you're not coming anymore. And they basically cancelled his talk. He wasn't given a talk anymore. He still turned up to the event and when they heard he was there, they came up and went, yeah, you gotta leave, get the fuck out. Right, so like the fact that someone was willing to like nuke his entire life, like completely annihilate his career and his whole life, and have everyone burn every single bridge with him just for a troll, that would either make him the like the most dedicated troll in the history of uni of the universe, or the most likely explanation is because this is something he actually believes and is very passionate in, and he is not trolling. And, well, unfortunately, it turns out I was right. 